You're listening to Australia's number one tech podcast. Every week, join hosts Brad and Jason here on the Tech Webcast. Download our iPhone app, follow us on Twitter at Tech Webcast, and visit us online at techwebcast.info. Here are your hosts, Brad and Jason. Welcome to episode 172 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on Saturday the 28th of January 2012. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights at 7. Today's hosts are Brad, Jason Oakley, Casey Coglin, Steve Klingham, and our guest is Jabba Davis from Pizza, Swift and Shift Couriers and Housos. Good afternoon, Brad. Hey, Jason. How are you, mate? Good, good. We've got a star on today. We do, mate. We have This guy's a legend. I, I've good been waiting to talk to this guy for a long time, and uh, he's on. And uh, yeah. You may know him off TV. He's been on Channel V. He's off TV. He's been banned in a bubble, and yeah, it's great he's stuff. He's everywhere. He's everywhere, yeah. <laughs> um, what's been happening, mate? Um, not a lot. I've been uh, trying to come up with an idea for a game to work on. It's going to take a while before anybody will hear anything interesting about that. But, Sweet. Um, otherwise, technology-wise, not a heck of a lot. Uh, Boxing Box got an update this week on my box. Love it. Great update. You should yeah, get what's one, that? Jason. Uh, the Boxy Box update. Uh, the three to air. Uh, 1.5. 1.5, uh, yep. Thanks, Steve. Did Steve get his uh, USB thing? He did. He did indeed. He's loving it, but unfortunately it doesn't work. But uh, we'll find about that tomorrow <laughs> in the show. And uh, yeah. Um, we got Steve. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Hey, How's it going, what's mate? What's up? What's up, mate? Pretty good. Uh, no internet trouble so far. Good stuff. My fingers. Good don't stuff. jinx it. Yeah, don't jinx it. <laughs> speaking of jinx. We got, uh, yeah, speaking, speaking of jinx. Speaking of jinx, Brad. Yeah, jinx. Hey, jinx. Give him a plug. We love your T-shirts, mate, and I uh, hope you send us more, uh, unfortunately. I bought two. I bought five. Uh, thanks, Holy jinx. Holy cow. And uh, we're gonna, I'll wear them all the time. And uh, hey, Casey. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Yourself? I'm fantastic. That's the way. How's the weather over there? It's pretty warm over here as well. Nice. Um, we had some rain at the beginning of the week, but it's... Really quite warm right now. Good stuff. I hope you got some stuff to talk about on the show. Some stuff you've been trucking out during the week? A little bit. Cool. Can't wait to hear it. Um, all right, Jason, where do we start, mate? Do you want to do the news first? Or yeah, let's make... get the news out of the way at the start of the show. I think that's a good idea. Cool. Let's do it. Google opened its social networking site to anyone 13 or older and added features to protect teenagers' safety, helping the company compete with Facebook, which has similar age requirements. The Google Plus service, until now limited to users 18 and up, will be available to all teenagers except those in Spain, South Korea and Netherlands where age requirements are higher, the company said. New safety enhancements, meanwhile, will help control who can contact teens online and put restrictions on group video chats. With Google+, Plus, we want to help teens build meaningful connections online, Bradley Horowitz, a vice president in charge of the service, said on his Google+, Plus page. We also want to provide features that foster safety alongside self-expression. Caution is spreading among popular file-sharing services known for letting users circulate pirated Hollywood content. FileSonic, FileServe and Uploaded.2 have abruptly cut off the sharing of movies, games and other software just days after the US Justice Department closed down Mega Upload, the largest such site. It looks like the chilling effect has already started, says Dennis Fisher, editor-in-chief of security blog ThreatPost. Maybe one of the reasons the U.S. government is going after the companies alleged to be hosting infringing content is to serve as a deterrent for others engaging in similar activity. FBI and Department of Justice officials do not discuss ongoing investigations. And speaking of Mega Upload, online file storage service MegaUpload.com was working on a legitimate music download service as recently as December that impressed the chief executive of New Zealand Internet Society, Internet NZ. United States technology website TechCrunch said the service Megabox was designed to let artists sell music direct to consumers online, cutting out record labels, and could it even have seen them paid small amounts when they allowed their music to be downloaded for free. TechCrunch said Megabox was tested with listed partners of Seven Digital, Gracenote, Rovi, and Amazon, the world's largest online retailer. Amazon would not comment on the nature of any relationship. Internet NZ Chief Executive Vikram Kumar said he was impressed by the business model for Megabox, which seemed completely legitimate. Megaupload.com Chief Executive Kim.com and three associates face extradition to the United States on copyright, racketeering and money laundering charges after their arrest last week. Kumar said the case against them would boil down to the level of knowledge they had about legal, illegal file sharing taking place through Megaupload.com 
and the actions they took to prevent it. Emails cited in the US indictment appeared quite incriminating, but the case would not be easy, he said. So there's a bit of conspiracy people thinking that's my, the mm-hmm. main reason that MegaUpload.com was taken down yeah. because they're going to open up something that compete with uh, music services such as iTunes or the Zune and that sort of thing. So cool. Who right. knows? Who knows? But, uh, who knows? It's interesting to think about. All right. All right. Well, let's uh, talk to the guests. Uh, people in Australia, you may know this guy off uh, Channel V. He was used to be on Channel V. He used to be on uh, Band the Bubble and the two shows, Fat Pizza and Halzos. We've got Jabber on. Hey, Jabber. Hello, everyone. Hello, world. Hello, Hello. internet. Hello, uh, How are you doing? It's Casey, Brad, Jason, Steve. Good to be here. Good, man. What's up? What's up? So, uh, Jason, you want to ask my first question, mate? Yeah. How did you get into uh, acting on all of these shows? That's a good question. I um, uh, knew Paul Fennick from uh, my first stuff on TV. He was my producer on uh, Red which was called Red the Music Channel on Galaxy TV, which was Australia's first pay TV. It's a precursor to Channel V. Um, and we did a lot of stuff together. He basically taught me how to uh, present and how to appear on TV. And he knew that I didn't mind smoking bongs. So when he made the TV <laughs> show Fat Pizza, he, <laughs> uh, asked, yeah, he asked if I would just come along and uh, act like a junkie. So I did that and that just led to, to more and more stuff through him. And um, Bob's your uncle, 15 years on. We've um, just just uh, done Houseos Series 1. The DVD went really well over Christmas. And hopefully we're looking at Houseos Movie and oh, Houseos Series wow. 2. Can't so wait. we'll see. Fingers crossed. Can't wait, can't wait. If you need any extras, give me a call. Yeah, give me a call too. I can follow Sydney. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Jabba, now you've been on Channel V, mate, um, and you also banned the bubble. How was that? Um, was that? Did you enjoy that? That was a long time ago. Yeah, 2004, I did a project at Federation Square in uh, Melbourne where we broadcast live on digital TV on Foxtel for 502 hours straight, I think, uh, with the band Regurgitator while they recorded a new album. And that was the the last project I did for Channel V. So it it had its um, ups and downs, uh, a bit of a shock. Um, to be honest. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been an interesting seven seven years since then. It is. um, Yeah, it's it's a hard one to to move on from, really. It's one of those um, notorious things that happen. And, um, yeah, I'm still kind of... There's not a day goes by where I don't think about it, to be honest. And I've, I've never listened to that album they made in there. I've never watched really? the, the DVD they made of Band in the Shit. Bubble. But I have just spoken uh, a bit about it for a documentary. Um, a guy called uh, John Turnbull in Brisbane is making for uh, About Regurgitator. Nice. Good stuff. Um, so would you ever do any music stuff again? Are you doing radio at the moment? or? I'm working for Max, which is basically the sister channel to Channel V. So if Channel V is the... Oh, nice. you know, the yeah, the yeah. Kanye, Katy Perry channel, then Max, I suppose, is the Coldplay U2 channel. So yes. it's the, uh, you know, good, the older audience. Good channel. You know good which channel. one we'd prefer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How All do right. you uh, compare the two types of things, hosting the music and the acting in shows? Is it you enjoy both of them or one more than the other or it's just all crazy? I guess it's like anyone that you know you you do something for the money and then hopefully you do something as a hobby. Um, and the the pizza stuff, the acting was always more for the love of. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of comedy. Um, you know, Australian comedy, US comedy, British comedy, and to be able to, you know, act in a show that people come up to you on the street and go, "I love the show." Um, you know that's its own reward. Whereas the the Channel V stuff, it's got a small audience, and the, and the Max stuff as well. Anything on cable, really. Um, I've done stuff for National Geographic Channel and Lifestyle Channel. Unfortunately, the audience is so small that you know it's pretty rare that someone will come up and say, "Hey, I caught that show and it was really good." So, but it, you know it pays well um, when the work's on. So, you know the acting has always pretty much been for the love of it. Okay, all right. Do people think you like your character? Well, I used to be, you know, I never really acted when I was in pizza. I really, really honestly just turned up and smoked bongs. But uh, I haven't smoked a bong since 2004. So if, <laughs> if, if people think I'm not as not as good as I used to uh, be, then <laughs> maybe that's why. Yeah, no more method acting, unfortunately. <clears throat> All right. what, do you, what do you think between working between television and radio? I mean, do you have, uh, is your approach different and what is your favorite per se or do you like them both or TV definitely I um look there's so much psychologically about being on television that attracts people I suppose like myself to it you know the uh from from turning up to work and getting makeup on and getting fussed around and getting fitted with a microphone the lights are on being the center of attention having people listen to you whereas my experience in radio is 
you turn up to a studio in your tracksuit pants, you talk on a microphone, and you have no idea who is connecting with you. Um, you know, there's not even a crew. Whereas on TV, yeah, there's just there's just something richer about television. I like radio. You know, I enjoy working in radio, but um, I write about radio for uh, Encore Magazine, which goes uh, online via Umbrella. dot com, cool. and. Um, it's, TV's just more, you know, I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of TV. You know, I love watching TV. I just finished watching Homeland, which I love. I'm watching Boardwalk Empire. I love The Office, the UK one, the US yep. one. You know, I grew up on TV. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really, I like the screen. I love TV. I love TV. It's great. <laughs> TV's great. Now, um, so what about um, Channel V? Did you enjoy Channel V, Jabba? Yeah, look, that was a lot of fun. I look back on some of the stuff we did there and, um you know, we we produced so much live music television. That, I remember, uh, I remember the show, the joint. That show was great. You had so many cool bands on that on that show, mate. Look, I really enjoyed that. That was a um, a late night show that we did. We did yeah. about two hundred episodes. Mixmaster Mike from the Beastie yes, Boys played on that's there. Cool. Robbie Love Williams that. came on. The Brown Hornet. <laughs> the Brown Hornet with Dylan Lewis, yes. of course. Yes. Uh, look, a lot of great bands and. Um, uh, just a great experience and we used to watch that show we would record it and then we would go home with the crew and uh relax and uh, and watch the show back you know it was that that kind of lifestyle at the time cool cool all right any questions jason any more questions mate do you get much fan mail <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, I look i have this thing of always trying to grow my uh twitter account and my, my facebook page and i find if if I go on TV and I put up a super on the screen that says you know follow me at, at Twitter or whatever, I'll get a couple of followers. But it, it amazes me. I always wonder how people grow those audiences without another medium. Mm. You know, do you think mm. people can just grow on Twitter? Because obviously I'm doing this because yeah, of Twitter. You can. Yeah, you can. You, know? you can. You just tweet stuff that people like, and that's it. And yeah. I've got well, maybe I need to tweet more. My wife always looks at me when I pull the phone out to get on Twitter. She's like, are you on Twitter again? I'm like, well, that's <laughs> kind of how it works. If you're yeah. not on there maybe once an hour, once every two hours, otherwise I get on every three days and do 20 tweets and then people probably unfollow me. Nah, shit, no, <laughs> just tweet what you want to tweet, man, and people love it, um, like what Jason does every day. Well, yeah. I've just tweeted about the, uh, the, the mega upload. The, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, Mega Box is that what it was? The music yeah, site. That's it. That's Straight it. away, got a response from a mate of mine who works in uh, in show business. It's like, you know, that's that's what I love is that is that instant. You know, I like I like the internet almost more than anything because it's so immersive and so instant. Feedback straight away. Yeah, definitely. exactly. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, so okay, so do you get much into technology, uh, Jabba? Yeah, look, increasingly so. Um, <clears throat> I think we all do, really. You know, <clears throat> even from the fact that. When I started in, in TV, pay TV was a new technology and people didn't think it would take hold. You know, over 15 years on, it's still growing and there's now digital TV. There's so many different other applications. Of course, yeah. there's um, Apple TV. Apple TV. Just to stream yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's IP TV. So there's uh, BoxyBox and, you know, that sort of stuff. BoxyBox is the best device to get if you want to do that sort of stuff. But, uh, there we go. So I'm, I'm always on the lookout because you, you kind of – YouTube, exactly. Um, it's, I guess it's a Xbox. matter of it's sitting with stuff to see – what's going to take hold mm. um, and you give everything a go. Like I remember well, Pan- Pandora was going to be the next music service. I don't know if that it still exists. You yeah, know, Spotify does. has been building yeah. for years now. Spotify, yep, that's still around. So, I mean, I guess there is so much technology now. It's a matter of what's what's going to stick. Look at MySpace. I did a massive TV show for MySpace. I left my radio job on the promise of another series in September 2008. Wow. The the crash came and, and of course, MySpace lost all its value and they weren't about to spend more money on a, on a TV production. We'd, we'd made the biggest specific production um, you know, for them called the MySpace Road Tour, we went in search of the most extraordinary MySpace user, and who who would have guessed? Rupert Murdoch certainly didn't guess that that was going to crash and burn. Yeah, exactly. Well, they just wow. announced at CES the they're kind of trying to start up, you know, MySpace TV, and it seems like they're ready to dump a bunch of uh, new money into that. So, my- can that work, Casey? Do you think anyone would believe in MySpace again? <sighs> I think they're going to really have to do a huge mm-hmm. campaign to really kind of reinvigorate that groundswell because a lot of people left MySpace kind of, you know, it kind of became like a ghetto. Like, yeah. what was what was yeah. before that? Friendster? Um, yep. You know, and I mean, people move from one to the other and they don't move back, you know. That's the nature so, of technology. I find it's like you know, you have an iPhone three, you get an iPhone four. You don't go, you can never go back. That is no. the thing with technology; mm-hmm. no, no. you can never go back. Once once you've downloaded a file, you know, if we're talking file storage or file sharing, once you've done that, 
to you know a lot of young people I know they've never bought music they've never bought a DVD it's just it's not what they know mm-hmm. um, and so that and nature of like with MySpace so exactly why would you go back to it right mm, exactly exactly all right I Steve. can't remember my passwords <laughs> <laughs> all right Steve any questions for uh, Jabba Steve any questions talk away mate. Uh- um, I think that was about it. All right. Okay. Let's, how's your boxing box going, by the way? Let's have a chat about that for a second, and uh, we'll come back to Jabber in a minute. And um, yeah, how's that going? With the TV uh, USB. Oh stick. yeah, I like the new uh, the new update uh, 1.5. Um, ob- obviously, it integrates live TV. Um, the uh, getting the main menu is a lot easier because it's right there when you go to the home screen. Yep. And pulling it up from anywhere uh, in, in the interface, and uh, and some of the they integrated some more with um, movies, so when you go to the movie, it will describe the movie better. Yep. And the cast and crew, I think that was some of the, the changes I noticed offhand. Cool, cool. And how'd you go with your USB stick? What's that? How'd you go with your USB stick? Oh, um, <laughs> how, could you say that again? I didn't understand it. The uh, free-to-air boxy box stick, you know, the one you got in the mail? The one. The oh, yeah, box. yeah. Um, yep. I'm, gr- I'm glad I got it. it the... The shipping was fast. Once they said they mailed it, it got here within two days. And, oh, that's fast. That's uh, I broke it up. Uh, I broke it out on Wednesday, and you know, started using it, and uh, as, along with the li- the the update one point five as well. So, cool. Oh yeah, it's coming up on my show, by the way. Uh, plug wait. for myself. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> you see the whole video for that. So, um, so Jabba, do you watch uh, Foxtel more than Free Air now? I know, take it you have got Foxtel at your house, but. Um... Yeah, do you... I'm yeah, I'm waiting for the footy season to start up. Look, I'm just on. I've just, of course, punched in Boxy Box, which yep. I've misspelt, and Google's redirected <laughs> me. Is this something available in Australia? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. We go. gave we gave one away. <laughs> what what is it in a in a nutshell? It's a media device that hooks up to your TV. You can use uh, watch YouTube and watch TV shows. It's like a Roku or an yeah, Apple like TV. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah it's like know, a, another set top box. It's um, a so I've already got an Apple TV. Do I still need a Boxy TV? Yes, you do. Because <laughs> boxes, yes, yes. yeah, Apple TV. Shit. Fred's their evangelizer. <laughs> Jason's got one. Oh, you did have one, but you had one, didn't you, mate? Me, I had one till we gave it away. But did you, did you like it? <laughs> did you like it? No, I thought it was all right. Yeah. I don't use my Apple TV though. Maybe I would have used the boxy box more. But I, th- I think he went to Dark Side. He got a Roku. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be Googling all these things. I, I got an Apple TV. I don't use it much. The Foxtel, I don't use much. The main thing I use it for, and I can probably do this more cheaply somewhere else. I'm waiting for the footy, for the AFL to start, for my, yeah. for my Foxtel to be worth its money, Yeah. Uh, apart from watching my great shows. You know what? Um, you know what, Jabba? I actually met, mentioned this on Twitter to you. Uh, I'm not sure when it was, but uh, you can actually get Foxtel on the Xbox 360 now. Yeah, unfortunately, I lent my Xbox to a three sixty Xbox 360 to a neighbor, which is good because I cannot control my gaming when I have it. So. Oh, God. <laughs> I, uh, it's best to not be in the house. But look, I um, I mainly use it to pause, rewind, and, and record stuff. To be honest, I, I don't watch a great deal of Foxtel. Oh, I That's skip, what I use my TV for. Yeah, t- yeah, yeah, I love that. yeah TV's great. TV's but, great. And I can't go back once I've been able to pause a TV. Yep. If I go somewhere else, I can't pause the television. I'm pretty angry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Crazy, yeah. yeah, exactly. And recording's good too. Oh, that happened when I go to my parents over Christmas. It's like ah, oh, can't Pobo. stop this. Totally <laughs> Pobo. Yeah. They only just got a mobile phone for the first time last year, so. Oh wow! It, it's their high technology. <laughs> cool, cool. I guess the two cans in the stream. All right, okay, I've got a question out. for you, Jabba. Now you don't have to answer this, mate. But um, I want to ask you a question about Ban the Bubble. Yeah. Now you are. How long were you on there for, mate? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks, right? Now, um, you had someone actually break into the bubble. Don't tell me that was you. No, that wasn't me. No. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. But I actually seen it on TV and I seen your your uh, response to it. How how were you? Like, were you scared or what? Oh, look, I was ready to kill the guy. I threw, I threw a, <laughs> probably a five kilo weight at his head. We we had uh, ongoing issues with security with our Shit. setup there. Basically, people could come down and bash on the glass at, at any hour, and the producers thought that was um, good fun because it well, made the you know the viewing more interesting. But for us, it just you know was more and more sleep deprivation. So when someone came in, that was I saw that as the ultimate kind of disrespect to what the project yeah. was and the ultimate threat. And yeah. and you know I was uh, prepared to use Chuck Norris style extreme prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> and a beard, and a beard like Chuck Norris. <laughs> so, um, so would you ever do it again? I don't know. That's a good question. I'd have to, you know, I, I was very, very fond of the guys from Regurgitator yeah, and um, band. a big fan of their music. So, I, I don't know who. If Jurassic Five reformed and did it, sure. But uh, I don't know, or the, or the Black Keys. But then there's only two guys, so I don't know. What good about question. Silverchair? Would you do it if Silverchair did it? Mm, I think I know those guys too well. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Jason, any questions, mate? Uh, no, that's about it from me. All right, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Um, and what, what's coming up? Um, any more houses and stuff, like that, that sort of thing? Well, what's coming up? I'm about to go on a motorbike ride to find a pie. Okay, uh, cool, cool. Good and fun. then <laughs> hopefully more houses and um, maybe some stuff with CNET and, uh, and Umbrella. So some CNET. more online stuff by the look of it. All cool. right, good stuff. All right. Um, all right, well, thanks, Joe, for being on, mate. I've got no more other questions to ask you, mate, but if you want to no worries, talk guys. about anything else. If you want to drop off, it's all right. You can drop off, yeah. All right, I'll hit the hang up button, and uh, if you can send people to my Twitter and my Facebook, that'd be awesome. Yeah, give us the, give us the link. Tell give us what they are. are. Yeah, tell us what they yeah, are, mate. Jabatron. Jabatron is the Twitter. Okay. And uh, Facebook's just slash Jabba. All right, cheers, buddy. the Jabba name? Um, from Return of the Jedi when I was 10. Oh, okay. Changed schools, <laughs> changed schools, and these two girls went, you look like Jabba the Hutt. Oh, that's <laughs> Great. harsh. Yeah, before that, it was um, Boss Hog from the Jigsaw Hazard. So. Oh, okay. man. It might be a better be up here. <laughs> wow. Well, wow, that's great. I shudder to think what fat kids are called these days at school. <laughs> Can only get worse. I look, I look forward to watching how's those yeah, again and see which one is you. Can't wait. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for Thanks, your support. Mate. And, Thanks. Uh, all Have a good weekend. Thanks, Thanks mate. a lot, you too. Appreciate right, it. See you later. Thanks. See ya. All right, that was uh, Jabba. Jason, great guy, wasn't he? Jabba, yeah, he's nice to have a chat too. Very amusing. All right. Okay, now, uh, app of the week is, um, uh, what was it? Yeah. Eve. Evie. Eve. Evie, you've got Evie. it. It's a great app. I should, you should get it. Um, it helps you find things and stuff and restaurants you buy and stuff. Sounds like Siri and Yelp. Yeah, but better. Better? <laughs> better. But, yeah. You give us a bit so more info? how is it better? Because like, you can type stuff in and it finds you for you and it talks to you. Can you talk well, to it like Siri? Siri does the same thing. No, but Siri can do uh, better things, read email and stuff, but this this can't. Uh-huh. But, uh, <laughs> but I think you should check it out and, uh, and just see how it works. But uh, yeah. Is it free? It's dollar dollar uh, ninety nine cents. Ninety nine cents. Yeah, I think cool. I've heard of it. Evie. Yeah, I was seeing Brad tweeting about it all week. Yeah, yeah I use it all the time. All week. I love it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Casey, what have you been up to, mate? Any news you want to report on? Um, well, I just jailbroke my iPhone since. Uh, <gasps> well, I mean, oh. I've been meaning to do that. I yeah, I go back and forth with the jailbreaks. Cool. I know. Um, every time, you know they. They update the OS, and then they pretty much implement a lot of the uh, stuff I would jailbreak for into the OS. So then, you know, when iOS 5 came out, I restored it. I'm like, ah, I, I never need to jailbreak again. But then, you know, I miss the customization and having uh, Wi-Fi tethering for my laptop mm. instead of having to pay for it or give up my unlimited uh, So you can't use data. Hotspot on your iPhone? Do you have Hotspot built into your iPhone? Um, it's... Well, you can do that uh, with a, several different apps through uh, the Cydia store. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I can pay for it, you know, through AT and T, but I'd have to give up my uh, unlimited data plan that I'm grandfathered into. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they got so, a lot of restrictions for tethering over there. Yeah, we can, we so can do it really I don't want to do that. And mm. plus, I like making my own icons and whatnot in Photoshop. That's cool. Be creative. Uh, but, you deal with that um. Uh, does that like break any services with, you know, uh, does it re- restrict like um, the usability in any way or with the No, I mean, a- anytime I've done it, it only enhances. I mean, you oh. can still buy and download apps from the Apple App Store and every, you know, everything else works the same. You just have added functionality on top of that generally. Um, it's a pretty deep hack because every time uh, Apple updates the iOS, you know, they make it harder to jailbreak. And so anytime the community comes out with a new jailbreak, it has to go deeper and deeper. So, I mean, compared to like the 2G and 3G jailbreaks, where it's pretty much just a software hack, like now it's it's a firmware hack and it's pretty deep. But I mean, if you know what you're doing and you know how to restore, it, it's like a computer, really. Yeah. Well, doesn't uh, when... Apple comes out with a new version, firmware version for the iOS. Does that break it once you, I guess, install it, right? Then yeah, you yeah. Re- if you want to um, get the latest software update through from Apple, then you have to completely restore, wipe your phone, yeah. you know, and, and wait for pretty much the community to come out with another one. Or you could just not update, which um, most people do. But in any case, um, so I did that last night and 
And for some reason, apparently the uh, mobile terminal app that you can download through the City S store, um, which pretty much, you know, is like terminal on your iPhone, um, is broken now. So I ended up going to the Apple App Store looking for a terminal or SSH app. Um, and usually I'd get, um, ISSH, which is pretty good, but I found an even nicer one and it's a little bit cheaper. It's $7.99 compared to $9.99 on the app store. It's called prompt, um, does exactly what it says. It gives you the command prompt, but, um, you can customize and share, uh, server connections. And so you can kind of keep all the server addresses kind of like a, uh, like Cyberduck or an FTP client on the desktop. So you can have these, you know, server connections all pre-programmed in and then really just connect to any server and, you know, have at it. That'd be very handy. Yeah, very handy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. Very handy. And it looks nicer, I think. You know, I'm a sucker for really good <laughs> interface yeah. design, so <laughs> cool. I'll pay more for looks, really. <laughs> yeah, same. I agree. Um, what about apps, Casey? You checked any cool apps this week? Um, besides prompt, that's about it. Um, okay. I've been kinda... I had um, one called e coffee card that I started using. Um, I discovered it at the uh, Sydney airport. The one of the coffee places that I always go there have a uh, QR code okay. at the front of the shop. And what happens when you buy a coffee, you take a photo of it using the app, and it takes the QR code into it. And then instead of carrying around six different pieces of cardboard or coffee cards. It's all in the app. So after you've had like your 10 coffees or your nine coffees, the 10th one's free, you just show it to them on their phone that you've already bought nine of them, the next one's free, and then they can just give it to you, which is much easier than carrying stuff around that can get lost or bulking up your wallet. So they've got that for iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry, and um, it's just very easy. You just take a photo and away you go. I've linked it in, signed into it with uh, Facebook. Very cool. easy to do as well. Good stuff. So, yeah, I think that's a really cool way of doing apps because I've had so many coffee cards in my wallet that's just bulky. <laughs> it's just a much easier way of doing it. You like the guy off Seinfeld when he's with his wallet, Jason? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a thing that I'll... That I found. Yeah, yeah, what's that up, Steve? Uh, that is the um, paper. I think it's called paper. The, wor- the wording's so small. Paper port notes, which uh, it integrates Dragonly. Uh, speaking uh, the uh, the engine, and, and you can uh, talk to, into the iPad, and it'll type it out as oh, notes. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. So, which is real cool. They they integrate that in there. So nice. They got throw that in there. Okay, yeah, I found it. I had and that's to look called Dragon app. Dictation, is it? Uh, no, it's um, Paper Port Notes. Oh, okay. And it but it the, uses uh, the Dragon Engine. Yeah, the Dragon Engine to uh, type right in the notes because before they do have an app where um, uh, itself and then you speak into it, but then you got to transfer it into something else. But this it goes directly into the notes, so you don't have to do that. Nice. Yeah, can you if you have an today? iPhone 4S with Siri um, and you, you hit the uh, the microphone icon on the on the uh, keyboard in Pages or Notes or what have you, it'll do pretty much the same thing. Yeah. But for an iPad, that's a good workaround. It is. Yes. There's yeah, no for Siri for it. <laughs> they need to have Siri on the iPad yeah. too, I reckon. Yeah. And the, yeah. Other, and the other thing that I wanted to mention that I'm very tempted, I think I'm going to buy, is a Raspberry Pi computer. Oh, what the hell is that? What? If you go to raspberrypi.org, there's a computer that's the size of a credit card. Wow. And um, so you can fit it in your wallet, carry it around. It's got an audio jack RCA video USB 2, uh, one or two ports, depending on whether you get the A or B model. It's got 128 megs of RAM or 256, depending on if you get A or B model. So the A model has limited features. It's $25 wow. US, and the B model is $35, but you get uh, 256 meg of RAM. You get a LAN controller, so you can plug it into your uh, network. You've got two USB ports. And you can plug in any, any, just about any size SD card. I think they've tested up to about eight gigs on there. Um, it's got micro USB power and uh, HDMI out, so you could plug it into the back of your TV and watch movies and stuff from it. Or um, what I want to do is plug it, plug my um, external USB drive into it and make it into a networked USB drive, which you could also stream your movies from. Uh, it also supports AirPlay. 
Cool. So nice. you could hook it up to your Apple TV or whatever. Yep. And it's yeah, very nice for thirty five bucks. You know, it's fun to oh, play yeah. with. It's got it's got a version of Linux on there, very easy to use. And they've just about to they've just gone into production. So um, probably about three or four weeks, you'll be able to buy one online. And I think they're in the UK. But uh, I think it's a really funky little device that would be fun to play around with. And you could walk around with a computer in your pocket that's, that's got cool. all these ports on it. Nice. Yeah. Check it out when it comes out, mate. Yeah. I'll so, do a video for you, unboxing and all that. <laughs> oh, you're going to get one, are you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> 35 bucks. I might, a get one. I might get one. With me, me too. I might get one too. Um, yeah, so um, I think that's about it. Steve, any last words before we go, mate? Oh, I think that's about it. My uh, iPad app, yeah. iPad app, and uh, yeah, you've been using your iPad app much, Steve? Uh, um, yeah, it's, you know, I use it a lot when there's a couple of magazines and stuff that I read on there. I take it now. I don't take my laptop to Starbucks anymore. I just take the tablet because it's yep. more convenient uh, when I'm in the living room and I don't want to come in here to do stuff. I just do it in there. Okay. All right. And also, uh, a, a, a call up I want to recommend for the iPad is called Ban- uh, what is it called? Uh, band of the day, great music app. You want to, if you're into music and stuff, into band stuff, great, great, uh, great app. Check it out. Check it out. Band of the day, it's good, good app. Um, and uh, that's 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 about it. Casey, any last words before we go, uh, mate? Um, Where do we find you online? I'm on Twitter at Casey Queso, uh, Google Plus, pretty much every day. <laughs> every day, every day. <laughs> yep, every week. Um, and me at Brad Oz and the Tech Webcast. Jason, where can they find you, mate? I'm at bluebilby.com and on Twitter, Warlock, W-A-U-L-O-K, and Blue Bilby Apps. And don't forget the Facebook app page, mate. Yeah. Facebook page, you want the Facebook page and uh, for his great apps and stuff. And, uh, Facebook.com sort of slash Blue Bilby. And Steve, and where can they find you, mate? Steve. Steve. Uh, you can find me here on the Justin TV channel, uh, justin.tv forward slash Linux cool dude, and of cool. course on Twitter, cheddarbox underscore live. Good great. stuff. Good stuff. All right, your video is good today, mate. It's not it's all out of place. Yeah, <laughs> Always internet just sucks big time <laughs> i got two in both well, at certain times they suck so move two to internets australia. move to australia mate that's what i want to say <laughs> i have to just get dissing internet just move to australia you get internet over here cable over you mate it's a great internet just, ever. just not melbourne no well yeah move to sydney or something sydney, and yeah. melbourne <laughs> Hi, Glenn from Aussie Tech Heads. Join Will, Eric and myself as we bring you the latest, most up-to-date, important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. A weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7.30pm or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information, www.aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest-running tech Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out Tech Webcast on blip.tv and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes to make sure you always have the latest episode at your fingertips. Tech Webcast, tech talk for geeks.